Good afternoon, everyone. In today's tutorial, we're going to be building a covered call calculator. The whole idea behind this calculator is that we can very easily take a look at an options chain, just like this one, and get an idea as to which calls equate to what percentage as a return on our capital invested. That's to say, it's really useful for setting up new covered call trades. If you're already familiar with covered calls and you'd like to skip this entire coding exercise, you can use the link in the description box to download the final version of this code, input it into your platform, and start playing around with it. A quick summary of what we're going to be building. As part of this tutorial, which is free for everyone, we will be building out the basic version of this covered call calculator, which is really, like I said, most useful for new trades. That's where we can evaluate and compare different options uh, inside of one options chain or even multiple options chain to get an idea of what percentage we can expect as a return and then make a decision as to, well, does that meet our trading goals and fit our overall criteria? Now for our volatility box members, I've built a more advanced version of this covered call calculator. The tutorial will be released early this week, and I'll send out an email once both the code and tutorial are available. But the thing that's different inside of the volatility box version, which makes it more advanced, is you can use it for existing trades. That's to say you can take old positions that you may be sitting on, or even positions you just opened a few days ago, start to do things like input your own cost basis, and now get this analysis geared towards your existing positions, which allows you to make not only smarter decisions, but also turn your existing assets into recurring income, which is the overall goal of this exercise. Now there's four different parts to this tutorial. In the first part, we'll use a real estate analogy to try and understand covered calls a bit better. And I'd like to point out why even in using the lowest volatility stocks, a covered call here starts to become a lot more appealing compared to using something like real estate and collecting rent. That will be part one. You can feel free to skip it if you'd like. I know covered calls and real estate are two very different asset classes, but I think the comparison is still useful. Now, part two is where we'll build out this calculator in a very simple Excel sheet. It's a lot easier to think about this in Excel. We can use real numbers, all that good stuff. Once we've built it out in Excel, in part three, we'll translate this calculator into thinkorswim code. And then finally, in part four, we'll apply the final version of this calculator to a real setup that's in KOPN and compare the different strikes and uh, analyze really which are the ones that are most appealing to try and sell as part of entering this trade using covered calls. Let's start by first comparing how covered calls are similar to real estate. And instead of using made up numbers, I found a piece of property that's on sale in Indiana. I've blacked out the address, but we can see the rest of the details here. And keep in mind, this worksheet is made by the folks that are actually trying to sell you this property. So a lot of the numbers right down here, things like the uh, cash flow expectancy, are most likely a bit inflated given that they're trying to sell you the place. And you'll find that even with these inflated numbers, that using the covered call thinkorswim calculator we built, you can very easily find better opportunities in terms of maximizing your return. Now let's evaluate this uh, one right here first. The cash price, the listed cash price is $67,500. The monthly cash flow that they've estimated after expenses is $373.34. And Indiana has better cap rates compared to the rest of the country. That's why I tried to find a property there. And that takes us to a monthly cash flow of right around 1%. So to say this a different way, with $67,500 invested, we expect to make a 1% return every 30 days in the form of rent. Now, equity appreciation here is separate. We'll leave that as a non-factor in this exercise, but that's another variable that you'd also want to evaluate if you were trying to go a bit uh, deeper in this exercise. And before we get to the comparisons of comparing this to stock, let's state the obvious first, which is that real estate is a much different asset class uh, with a different set of goals and risk parameters. And comparing the two is not really fair, but we're going to do that anyways. Now let's move forward. Here I have a, a table broken down with rental income compared to covered call income. Now the way I've laid out this table is quite simple. Uh, on the left hand side in this table, I have four stocks listed along with the volatility tier that they're in, along with what the implied volatility looks like for the April monthly series. And then the return percentages based on if you're exercised or not exercised for the at the money call option. On the right hand side here, I have another table. This is our baseline for rent using real estate, where we just calculated we had the 1% return for base uh, just the rent uh, off of cash flow. And then if we add an equity appreciation as well, that in my head would be the equivalent of uh, trying to calculate something where you had the call exercised. 
Now, if we go through this table here, on the left-hand side, we have AT&T, then we have Fastly, then we have Carry, and then we have AMC. AT&T is at the lowest end of this volatility tier, which is 25% implied volatility. Our return percentage there, if we're not exercised, so we keep just a premium, is 1.44%, still greater than this 1% that we see in our rent. And if the shares are actually exercised, then that return percentage goes up to 2.25%. And this is for, I believe, 25 days expiration. So while rent is right around 30 days, this right now we've mapped it out as 25 days expiration. If we increase our volatility here, so that means we increase the amount of risk you're willing to take, as in the stock that you're purchasing at whatever entry price, you're willing to actually sit through those shares in case the volatility takes us lower in those stocks, Fastly goes up to the mid volatility tier. That's where our uh, implied volatility for the April series, 74.49%. The return percentage, if we're not exercised in terms of the calls we sell, 5.3%, so we keep only the premium. If our calls are actually assigned, or exercise, excuse me, that's 11.23%, uh, the premium goes up where you sell the shares. If we move on to the next tier, we have carry, which is at an even higher end of volatility. The implied volatility there jumps from 74% to 119%. Our return percentage also jumps up, so you're getting paid for that additional risk from 5.3% up to 9.32%, again, for that same 25 days. And if we do get exercise, that jumps up to 18%, so obviously this looks a lot nicer. And finally, if you compare this to really the conglomerate in terms of volatility right now, purposely not chosen GameStop, but we use AMC, that's where the volatility is very high. The implied volatility is 196%. The return percentage there for the at-the-money option for collecting just a premium is a whopping 19%. Again, you compare this to the 1% in rent, of course, apples to oranges, but still the percentages there, you get an idea of the kind of uh, premiums that are baked inside of AMC right now, where if you got exercised, your premium is only marginally better than if you just collected the premium uh, for that 19% gain there. So this is how you can read this table, but the overall takeaway here is in all tiers of volatility, we outperform the 1% that we're seeing in real estate. So this is to really try and sell you on this idea of why is this something that we're interested in in the first place. Now let's move on to building out this covered call calculator in Excel first. I've opened a new sheet here in Excel, uh, but in case you do have access to it, Google Sheets makes this process a lot easier uh, simply because you can use the Google Finance functions to automate some cells such as getting the current price of the stock or the closing price, things of that sort. This doesn't need to really be polished, it's just there to kind of help us get our ideas, so let's just get started here. The first column we'd like is the symbol, since we're looking to compare a bunch of different symbols here. We can also get, say, the current price here, or the closing price, however we'd like to look at that. We can also look at the strike for this uh, option that we'd like to sell, and we need the premium that we collect as part of selling that strike. So now let's come into Thinkorswim here and use a real example. So let's use one of the ones that we just had, and I'll remove the covered call calculator here so we don't have the answer ahead of time. But if we remove this, click OK, let's start off. Uh, as part of AT&T, our current closing price is 29.76. So we can put uh, symbol is T, 29.76. Then the strike price, the at the money that we're looking at is 30. And the premium we uh, collect there is 45. So we'll say the strike price is 30. And the premium that we can collect here is 45 bucks. Uh, all three of these are going to be dollar values. So let's fix that up. And then we can also make them center align just so it looks a little cleaner while we go through this. Now we can move on to the two return percentages we need to calculate. So we can say, actually let's input a, a row here and at the top we'll say this is if our shares are uh, not exercised and then here we can have something like our return. We'll do it in terms of both dollars as well as percentage just to keep things initially a little bit more understandable. Let's merge this, try to fix that. Okay, cool. So now for our return dollars here, if our shares aren't exercised, that means we're keeping only the premium that we've collected. And that would be very simply just the same $45. So we can just say equals D3. And this as a percentage would be equal to our $45. That's what we've collected divided by what we had to spend to collect the same $45 which is our closing price times 100 since we needed to buy 100 shares, which gives us a return percentage of right around 1.51%. Now we can repeat the same thing to create something for uh, shares in which we are exercised. So we'll say return 
dollar return percentage. Let's open this up a bit. And then here, our return in dollar form, if our shares are exercised, let's actually change that. So if our shares are exercised here, our return is going to be our premium collected, which was this $45, plus the gain between our strike price and our closing price. So in this case, that's what, for 24 cents times the 100 shares, so $24 plus the $45. That would be our total return from a dollar amount. So we'll say is equal to our premium plus our strike price minus our closing price. And we need to multiply that by 100 since we would have 100 shares. So just to recap, we're taking the premium that we've collected. We're then taking the difference between the strike price and the closing price, which is uh, the, the premium that you can sell your shares at. So we're saying, we, hey, we're selling the right to someone to buy our shares at 30. You bought them at 29.76. You have a gain of 24 cents per share times 100 shares. Press enter here. You'll see the return dollars goes up to $69. And we can use a formula very similar to this right here since we're still using that same 100 shares to buy, except this time instead of E3, we're going to be using G3. Right, so we can say is equal to G3 divided by our same B3, our, our, our closing price, this is what we're using for our entry, times 100. And that, again, becomes a percentage right here, 2%. Let's give this two decimal places as well. So 2.32%, and we can make both of these centered. And that is now our table here that we would like to really translate inside of Thinkorswim. You'll notice it didn't really take us a lot of... Uh, crazy calculations to get here. It's just a little bit tedious. And now this was just for the 30 strike. Imagine you wanted to try and compare all of these different strikes against one another. Well, that would take forever to do. And now let's say you wanted to compare AT&T to Verizon to say three uh, T-Mobile, a few other stocks. That would still take you a long time to get all of the data that finally gives you what you would need to make this comparison. So what this exercise gave us in terms of Excel was the formula, but if we can get the same formula inside of our options chain inside of Thinkorswim, that would make this process a heck of a lot easier, faster, and more efficient. So now let's move on to part three of our tutorial in which we take the same Excel sheet and instead we build this formula inside of our options chain right here. Let's start by coming inside of our Thinkorswim platform, and we're going to be in the trade tab in particular since that's where our options chain lives. Now to customize the columns that we see here, you can click layout at the top. Once you click that, you'll have a dropdown. Inside of that dropdown, click customize. And once you have the customize window uh, pull up, you can then click this dropdown inside and choose custom quotes. Now these are the same custom quotes that you have available as part of the dashboard. You have only a finite amount of these custom quotes available. So when we use one for covered calls here, we're going to be actually taking away one script uh, from other aspects. So things like a dashboard script or other option scripts you may have. So you may have to be a bit intelligent here around how you manage your scripts, but this is where all of the custom scripts can be inserted for our options chain as well. Now I'm going to use the same covered call script that we have and I can double click this to add it to my current set of data. In case you don't have a custom quote already there, just go ahead and click whichever one you see here. It might say something like custom quote one, double click it, add it to your charts, and then you can click the scroll icon to start to edit the code. Now inside of this, let me delete all of the code that we have, and let's start from scratch. Now there's really two variables here that we need to lay out first. We're listing them out or defining them mostly because it would make the process easier for whenever we need to change these values if we ever do in the future. And that's our max shares, which we can set to a default of 100, along with the max contracts that we'd like to do as part of this percentage to one. In case in the future you'd ever like to see this in say dollar form, that's where changing this would make a difference where you could get an idea of what your returns are uh, in a dollar uh, uh, form as opposed to the percentages here to get an idea if you hit your uh, monthly trading goals or not. Now moving along, we have our max shares, max contracts. Now we need to translate this first column that we have, which is our premium collected. We already have access to the closing price inside of Thinkorswim. We already have access to the strike price with the get strike function inside of Thinkorswim. And we also have the premium of this particular strike price by using the close on that option. Now what we need to do is translate this return that we have in our premium and uh, build that out first in, in ThinkScript. So here we're using our premium and dividing that by the closing price over the amount of shares that we have. So let's say def premium 
And here we can define premium as our max contracts that we have. So in this case, we have just one times uh, the close. And the only reason why we can use close here is because this close is being applied to the option strike, meaning it's taking the closing price of that particular strike. And we can then multiply that by 100 to get uh, the premium in a, a raw dollar amount. Let's test along the way. So let's create an add label code here. We'll say yes, list out the premium, and then uh, we'll just say color dial white for the time being. Click OK, click OK. And you should notice here we have the same close price here. So this was $43. That was the last closing price for the strike. The last closing price for the 31 strike was 18. So we're now seeing that piece of information. To come back in and edit your code, Again, you click the same drop down, click the customize one more time. And this time you just click the scroll icon, which lets you come back in here. So now we have the premium as a total dollar amount. We now need to translate this in percentage form. So let's say def uh, premium uh, percentage is equal to the premium that we've collected divided by our max number of shares that we've bought times the closing price, except this time we want the closing price of the underlying symbol. So in this case, AT&T. So we'll say get uh, underlying symbol, close that out, and then close this out. We should still have an error. One more parentheses. Cool. So that now compiles. So now we have uh, our premium as a percentage form for buying 100 shares of AT&T at 29.76. Let's plot this and see how that goes. So we'll say premium percentage apply okay let's just move this window to the side and we should see now uh, here this number drops down so we have 1.44 percent let's come back in here uh, and let's change this to something like as percent and see if that helps to clean this up click apply click okay and that's now giving us the same number in a clean nice percentage form so we know the premium uh, so far is working correctly this was 1.44 our closing price was I believe point uh, 43 so if we change this premium to $43, our return percentage here changes to 1.44%, which matches. Now, the next one we need to build out is our premium if our shares are exercised. So that's to say, if you bought the shares at $29.76 and you sold the 30 strike, then you would have the difference of 30, uh, which is the sh uh, price you would be selling your shares at, minus your entry price, which is 29.76. So there, let's uh, first create a uh, variable here called, uh, let's just say strike price gain. This is going to be in dollar form. And here we can say something like get strike. So that's the strike we're currently on minus our close of, again, the underlying symbol. Since we want uh, AT&T's closing price, close this out. Might have had one extra parentheses there. Okay, cool. So this now gives us our uh, strike price difference in dollar amount. So we can say something like def, um, and instead of premium, we'll say premium plus shares percentage. And here, our total would be our strike price gain times the max number of shares that we have. So in this case, how much are we making uh, as a difference per share times the total number of shares that we have. Uh, once we have that, we can also add that with our premium collected and put a parentheses around both of these. So we have our numerator done. Now we need our denominator which is again going to be the same thing as up above. So we can just copy paste that in. So we'll say max shares times the close of our underlying symbol. And now if we plot what this looks like, click apply, okay, move this window over. We should notice that this changes to 2.25%. If we come back into our Excel sheet, that matches. So now we have both of these numbers calculating inside of our calculator as we expect. Now we need to worry about the formatting here. So now to have both of these percentages side by side, we can say something like premium percentage plus, and then we add in a quote. We'll add in a space here with the divider and then another space, close out the quote, plus um, our premium shares percentage. This is the second one. And then we can also format this a bit nicer. So we'll say as percent, premium percent. And if we click apply, okay. That should then hopefully plot both of these percentages on our charts as we would expect once the NAN errors get solved. So now we have 1.44%, 2.25%. And just like that, that was quicker. So now let's say that you wanted to compare 31. Here you would have to do something like T. Then again, we can just copy paste all of this. So now instead we would do say 31 strike price. Our premium here for 31 uh, was I believe 18. And if we used 18, 
You can see how the percentages here are now changing, 0 0.60, 4.77%, but you still had to input both of these values here. Instead, if we just come in here, you'll notice they're pre-calculated right away and they match 0.6%, 4.77%. Beautiful. Now, the last thing we can do here, just to make this a little bit cleaner, is uh, color coat the percentages where they turn green after a certain threshold that you have. So, for example, here at the very top, we can say something like input uh, and we'll say max percentage threshold. And let's just make this something outrageous like 50%. Here we can say if our premium plus shares percentage, so that's our total premium if the shares are assigned and we lose uh, the, the shares that we have possession of. So if this value is greater than 0.5, meaning 50%. So if your return is greater than 50%, then give me a color of green else remain white. And then here, maybe we even do something like greater than or equal to, click apply, click OK, and we click OK. Now, what you should notice here is you don't really have very many places with 35 strikes open where you see any green. In fact, you have none. Now, if instead we switch over to the, the chart that we started off with, so that was KOPN, what you should notice is the green happens a lot quicker here, right? The green happens with the strike price is 17.50. So now, for the last part of this tutorial, I'd like to apply the actual calculator, and I'm going to be using KOPN, which is the stock we first used. The reason why KOPN is interesting, we have a reason to get bullish in the first place. We have a slingshot squeeze along with the squeeze signal. The slingshot squeeze stats are fairly nice. Two winners, one loser over the past three years, and both of those winners were good for an average of 15.96%. The loser was only 0.48%, so all of these are good signs. We take a look at the 1272 and the 1618 in Copen. You'll notice the 1272 is at 15.68. 1618 at 1830 so if we could find a strike somewhere in between there i think that would make for a very interesting place to try and sell kopn assuming you were interested in playing a move into this zone so if we come into our trade tab right here in kopn 17.50 is also where we now start to exceed that 50 percent threshold that we had it was an arbitrary number so keep that in mind but if we sold say the 17.50 strike that means you bought kopn at 11.14 we have multiple signals reasons why we're looking to buy the shares in the first place you also sold some premium against it that was a 17.50 strike call just if you collected the premium that was a return of 4.94 percent if by uh, april 16th we're below 17.50, you would have made 4.94% on the stock, and you can repeat this one more time. If the shares did get taken away from us, that means the call was exercised, that return jumps up to 62% since you actually sold your shares at that same 17.50 mark. Now you take this one step further and you'll notice you also have a 20 strike available here where you're still collecting decent premium considering that this is a 16 delta uh, call option that you're selling. You're still collecting 2.87% premium uh, just for uh, participating in that. And if you get assigned or exercise, excuse me, that's 82.41% to try and take off at an exit at a price that most likely would be higher than a move you'd be willing to stay inside of the stock for and get rewarded for doing that in the form of premium. Now, let's say within this 26 days, uh, you fall short of the 20 strike price, but instead you end up right between this uh, 1272 and 1618 extension. This 20 strike price, you get to collect 100% of that premium. That premium would have eroded. You would have kept that premium. And you can now come into the May series and repeat that same strategy. And at that time, you would have a strike price even greater than 20 available for you. Hopefully at that point, something like 28, 30, something of that sort to keep repeating this position and milking out premium, turning KOPN in this example as your real estate, the house that you're willing to buy. In this case, that house would cost you $1,100. And you're looking to try and collect in KOPN is rent at least say if you're looking for uh, the 20 strike price $35 in rent for that $1,100 if you'd like to collect more rent you can get upwards of $150 but that's if you're willing to sell the house fairly quickly you can make that decision based off of the trading style you have but I think if you can start to shift the way you think about covered calls you'll find that they're actually quite an effective and forgiving trading strategy
Now the last thing I'll point out before we conclude this tutorial is again how easy it is to compare different option expiration series where now you can compare the 26 days to the 61 days to the 117 days have these percentages already ready to go calculated without needing to input each particular strike price and you can see here for example if we uh, compare this the 20 strike price if you go out 26 days to expiration you can collect right between 30 and 40 bucks or collect about 2.87%. Now if we take a look at the same 20 strike, but this time in the May series, you'll notice that percentage jumps up to 8.08 and 87%, up from the 2.87% that we saw here. And if you come out to the 117 days to expiration series, that same 20 strike jumps up to 16%. So a different way of thinking about this, if we collapse this focus in on just these two, for taking in that additional 35 days of risk here, so going from 26 days to 61 days uh, in terms of the, the call that you're selling, you're being compensated with an additional 5.21% in premium uh, for taking on that risk. The downside, of course, here is the liquidity in these strikes is not as great as the 20 strike here. And of course, the obvious, you have to stay in this longer until that premium starts to erode. Now, staying inside of that 30 days to expiration series is the one that I find to be most interesting as you can start to have theta decay work in your favor as part of this covered call. You can also have maximized for the strike that you're looking to sell based off of charts, signals that you may be looking at, and places where you normally like to sell your shares anyways. Combine both of those pieces with the calculator to find that one magical strike which really gives you the best bang for your buck. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. We built an entire covered call calculator for the options chain and thinkorswim, and it didn't take us as much time as it took us to try and input that manually inside of our Excel sheet, which is part two of this tutorial. Now, if covered calls were already part of your trading plan or strategy prior to this video, hopefully now you can see how using this calculator makes the process of finding that covered call, the, the target one that you're looking for, much more efficient so that you can hit your trading goals. And if covered calls were not part of your trading plan previously, I hope that this tutorial at least opened your eyes into how effective the strategy can be if you ever did choose to deploy it inside of your own portfolio. For all Volatility Box members, stay tuned for the second part of this tutorial in which you can now repeat the same exercise, but instead of trying to set up a new trade, say at 11.14, we can now uh, assume if you had actually gotten an entry at the Market Pulse line at 9.46, what do these percentages look like as a result of your existing position? And now you can start to manage these existing positions much, much smarter, where you have the data, you have the calculator telling you what your return percentages are, and for positions where it makes sense to do so, you can start to sell calls against the shares that you already own instead of letting these shares just sit there. Instead, use them to collect some fairly healthy premiums in stocks where it makes sense to do so. All right, hope this video helps. Take care, everyone, and we'll see you in the next update.